Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2. And today I'm going to be giving you part 9 of what if Naruto was the legendary Uchiha X Namikaze. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also guys, stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming your way over in Anime King 3 and Anime King. And remember if you're new, yes, you heard that correctly. I did have three channels, Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And yeah, without further ado, would you say begin this new episode start? The intro. <laughs> So, the last part we left off, as Mito, Uzumaki, and Sakamo, Hataki arrive. As the members of Naruto team sacrifice themselves to stay back, as Hisna stayed back as she got skewered by the stone ninjas, as Naruto eyes widened in panic and fear. But she gave him a smile as she told him to live on, as she released an explosive tag that ripped apart the entire area, as the entire traps went off obliterating a few dozen stone ninjas. As Hawk took Naruto and got the hell out of there, they reported back to the commander. As Naruto was pestering with rage, he was gonna slaughter every single stone ninja. He was gonna slaughter them all. As Han came to him, Han will need his help in facing off against Sakumo and Mito. Because of Sakumo fire style and need Naruto water style. So with that, the Black Light members got ready. All of them. As Han and Naruto move out, as Hawk and the others took on the stone ninjas. Mito was surprised when she saw the Master of Water. She thought that it was Toburama. As Orochimaru took over the body of Sakamo and he called Naruto Senju. As Naruto cursed at him, he wasn't in Senju. He was Naruto Namikaze as the battle began. It was furious as Naruto took on Mito. She was powerful, unable to control her strikes, unable to stop herself. She was fast, quick. Her chains were immensely speedy. As Naruto had to do everything just to evade. But Han was not a leader of this squadron for nothing. As he came back, he was brutal, he was swift. As he was able to push back the two until he activated the seal, the Death Reaper seal. As Naruto was surprised by that, that Kinjutsu would cause him something dear. Minato had taught it to the three squad leaders just in case Edo thinks he's arrived. But it required one to sacrifice their soul. As Mito and Sakumo gave Naruto a few parting words, as Sakumo also told him to tell Kakashi something. As Han risked his life, and he told Naruto that he was a commander now. So with that, things were over in that fight, but the stone ninjas, the rest of the forces were back, and they hang. They hang Naruto's friend, as Naruto saw Hawk in the tree, but Mikasa and the others arrived and picked him up. Mikasa saw that Naruto was breaking down, so she was harsh to him. She cursed him and told him that he was pathetic, and he should just go home now because he was going to die. As that brought out the rage inside of Naruto. Meanwhile, Minato and the others were watching as Baku told them not to interfere. This will be the last line of defense. And if they help them now, their spirit, their morale will continue to break down and they will become nothing but cowards. Han was Baku's son. As the man lost his son but he kept his composure and he kept himself calm as ever. As Naruto went back to the camp as Genma was pissed off. As Naruto was the only one to survive that battle. As he was now the commander. As everyone was scared though. As Mikasa was in the background. After what she did, she didn't feel like she was their friend anymore. But Naruto went over and placed hand on her shoulder. As he hugged her, he told her that he understand as he thanked her for what she did. As she was able to snap him back in this mind mentality that he was in now. As he told them that he was ready. He was going to become the commander and lead them all to victory, no matter what. So yeah guys, so basically as well left off you guys can switch across the place to the first episode of this new episode. Naruto stood in front of his group, his blade uncheated. This is what we fight for. This is what all of us fight for, he said. 
We've come this far, endure a lot of pain. Yes, we lost our commander, but his final wishes was for us to see this through. And if we give up now, we will be spitting on his last command. Which we will not do, said Naruto. But we're outnumbered, said Uncle. Even if we fight together, there's just too much of them. We can win, said Naruto as he looked at all of them in the eyes. Even if you're with us, it's impossible, said Ryu. As Naruto resolve just seemed to increase. We are strong, stronger than all of the stone army. We can send them back to hell even if we're outnumbered, said Naruto. A little hope started to brew in some of the troopers' eyes. Mikasa stepped forward as she looked at them. You are either incompetent or spineless cowards. We are black like soldiers, the best soldiers of this world. Today, we all have a choice to make. Whether we want to be known as the cowards that abandon your posts when their country need them the most, or do we want to be known as the warriors that destroyed the entire stone army and became the vanguard of victory in this war in Mikasa as she looked at each and every one of them. As more black lights start to get more confident. You guys are real idiots, you know that right, said uncle. With a smile on her face as she made her way towards Naruto and the others. Hannah, Ayuba, Rido, and many more black lights stepped forward. No, the only ones that were left was Genma and the 40 more behind him. That was still doubtful. Genma noticed Mikasa's eyes on him. A small blush came on his face. How was he supposed to say no when she was looking at him like that? Damn it! Oi, idiots! We weren't trained to let our comrades fight alone. At this rate, we will be known as coward. Now come on. I'm with you, Namikaze, said Genma. <laughs> I'm surprised he said that, said Radio. As everyone laughed, seeing Genma blush a bit in embarrassment. You know what? Screw it, one of the members in the Forty Man group said. Yeah, seems this is the only way. After all, I won't want to be known as a coward. And let's fight for our friends. We're black lights after all. We do not give up. We fight the impossible odds. Naruto looked behind him as he saw the rest of the company join them. As he smiled at that. Time skip. The cold wind smashed into them really hard as the remaining forces stood there, waiting to face the most difficult chance of their life. Tonight the soil of Shanja Hill will be washed in blood, but that blood will be of the stone ninjas. In front of them was a tall young boy, his hand resting on his kunai launcher as he was loading his magazine into the weapon. As Naruto and Mikaze didn't know how his life has changed so much from being an instant little kid with his family, and now he was a combat squad leader. Today though he realized something. He made him understand why his father was not there for his early childhood as he looked at each and every one of them that were willing to fight and die for his command. His father was holding up the entire nation in his shoulders and he blamed his father for abandoning him. Now, being a leader here, he could kind of understand the feeling of that and his father was under much more stress. After all, he had thousands of men to watch over. With great power came great responsibility as he looked towards the face of all of his men. Naruto there here. Contacting one minute said Ayuba calmly. As Shizune looked around, she was scared, but looked at her friends, gave her hope. Mikasa was at the front with Armin by her side, while Naruto stood at the edge of the trench. Arm yourself, said Naruto. As the sounds of weapons being armed, Tantos, Kunai's launcher, everything was ready. My brothers, the time has come. We will not let this hill fall, said Naruto. As all of them saw the hazy figures of the stone ninjas approaching. Yes, all of them said as their eyes burn with nothing but determination. Hunt them down like the bastards they are. The head, the eyes, anywhere as long as those bastards are dead, said Naruto. We will not fall. We will soak this blood and kill tonight, but it will not be ours. It will be the stone ninjas, said Naruto. As the place shook, when the shinobi start to move. Capture the post, the commander of the stone ninja army said. As a war cry could be heard as all of them, rock it forward. Naruto raised his hand, stopping his troop from doing anything yet. Just a bit more, he said. Arm and finger trembled on the trigger as he saw the thousands of shinobis rushing towards him with bloodthirsty screams. He had to wait for a few seconds more, he couldn't be jumping on fire yet. Rinjutsu! Naruto shouted as hundreds of blue arrows fell from the sky as stone shinobis tried to block them, but they pierced right through their weapons and tore them apart. I watched, he said Naruto, as the young black light stepped forward and rushed through one sign and slammed his hand on the ground. Sealing technique, fire barrier, seals appear everywhere and trap a hundred, hundred plus stone shinobis. What the hell is this? Destroy it now, burn, said Naruto. As chaos and screams erupted as a barrier, lit up with nothing but flames, tearing and burning apart the stone shinobis inside. Almost 900 stone shinobis were cooked alive. She's only puke when she saw the skin being melted off the stone shinobis as they tried to get free. 
as their body was melted down to the bone. Many of the stone shinobis slit their own throats, so they wouldn't feel the pain anymore as some of them tried to break the barrier, but the moment they touched it, they were turned into ashes. The once mighty army just lost 1,000 of their forces in just mere minutes. Some of them were in fear that they were up against the yellow flash. Only that man was capable of such destruction in such a short time. As Nurka jumped on the edge of a trench as a fire barrier started to disappear. As his Sharingan twirled in his eyes. As he looked at the 2,000 stone shinobis that were left. Kill them all, said Naruto. As he leaped up in the air. As he released his kunai launcher. As the kunai came now ripping and tearing apart stone shinobis. As Uncle leaped ahead in front of him and sliced down three shinobis. Die you bastard, she screamed. This girl is crazy, Naruto thought. Well, they needed crazy. As Mikasa rushed out as she threw several shurikens they pierced right through the eyes of the stone ninjas as she flipped. She ripped off heads with her blade and her kunai. As she moved towards the squad leader as she fired her 3D gear and pierced into his shoulders. As she yanked herself towards him, she cracked her foot in his skull. Literally dropped kicking him down to the ground before jamming both her blades into his eyes. She then turned towards the rest of them. You're next, she said. As they took a step back in fear as they saw her weapons coated in blood. No remorse, no mercy. As the black light moved and decimated the front charge of the hidden stone army. Another round of arrows dropped from the sky as Naruto looked up to see Renjutsu, gave him a wink before she moved on to the rest of the forces. As Naruto flipped up in a tree using his 3D gear, as he taught several shurikens before flashing through hand signs, those shurikens multiplied as they came down in a large quantity, piercing skulls, piercing through eyes. It was a bloody scene as he threw Kuna's explosive tags as they went off right in the middle of the group. The explosion sent Stone Shinobis flying. Wood release, cutting technique he said. Hundreds of wooden spikes came out and started to rip apart the Stone Shinobis but in doing so Naruto was left open as he had his hand together. Die! As few Stone Shinobis rushed towards him but something jumped in front of Naruto and sliced the closest one's throat as blood splashed in Naruto. You will not harm my commanders and Armin. A small smile came on Naruto's face, saying that his friend had finally overcome his fear. Today Armin became a true shinobi. Thank you, said Naruto. As he deflected the Kuna aimed for Armin as the both of them went back to back. What are friends for idiots and Armin? As he kicked the enemy ninja right in his junk, the man dropped to his knees as Armin flipped over him and snapped his neck. Earth style mud dragon. As Naruto stepped in front of Armin but Mikasa landed on the earth dragon that was made by the enemy. As she went through hand sign, lightning release, thunderbolt jutsu, she slammed both of her hands on the dragon's head as she decimated as she landed right beside her friends. Morons, said Mikasa, as all of them were back to back. As Naruto smirked at that as they moved, slashing through the several stone shinobis that surrounded them, as a platoon jumped in front of Naruto as he simply ducked hundreds of wind blades and shurikens in between came as they were decimated. As Naruto turned that smile as he saw Mikasa and Armin backing him up. As a stone ninja dropped right in front of Naruto, as Naruto smirked. Do you want to dance with me? He said. As he moved, dodging the first strike, Naruto grabbed the shinobi by his neck as his sharing gun poured into his shinobi eyes. The shinobi body went limp as Naruto snapped his neck and threw him straight towards the real commander. The one that was behind the forces. The frontal commander was dead by Mikasa. The real one stood there. He had light gray hair that reached down to his back. He was wearing a purple uniform. He was 6 feet 6 inches tall. His muscles were so developed he could crush skulls with them. Are you their leader? The man asked coldly as he looked at Naruto. Mikasa was about to step forward to help him but Armin placed a hand on her shoulder, shaking his head. Because no one is getting between them, the two leaders are going to fight. Both the army stopped fighting as he looked towards his battle. What's your name boy? The stone leader asked. He had only seen such brutality in the battle with the four Tokagi. As Naruto started to laugh. He sounded like he was crazy as he was just laughing. Know that the war began. Names don't matter. Boy, murderer. Call me whatever you want, said Naruto. Just who are you anyway, the stone commander said. I know one. No one you need to know. But I will be the last person you will see, said Naruto. Because I'm gonna wipe all of you from the face of this earth. The next second the commander was ripped in half. Another Naruto had came from the ground and just severed him in half. The commander was killed in the blink of an eye. The stone shinobis were shaking to their core. As Naruto turned, a wicked grin on his face as he stepped forward, they start to step back. Oh, there won't be any running, said Naruto, as hundreds of wooden spikes erupted from the ground. 
tearing through their body. Retreat! They're monsters! The screams could be heard. They try to run but a massive wall blocked them from leaving. This is Berg said Root as he launched. He set her three heads before landing as he decimated the code in front of him. The remaining 60 stone ninjas looked around in fear. In a matter of minutes, these soldiers had destroyed their entire army and there were still 50 of them alive. And now they were surrounded. As Naruto stepped forward towards the group, as two females rushed towards him with their blade. As Naruto vanished, he appeared behind them in the next second and their heads were gone. You bastard! As another female tossed her tonto straight towards him, as Naruto caught it by the blade before snapping it. As he then turned and threw the pointy edge right back towards her with such speed as it pierced right in her chest. He flashed in front of her. This is for his night, he said as he dropped a kick into her skull. As he shattered something in her head as she dropped down motionlessly. Where the hell is he? As Nurtis stepped forward and smiled, he was happy. He was avenging his fallen comrades. We surrender. Please don't kill us, only the stone shield be said in fear. We accept defeat, a young female ninja said, as she placed on her weapons, low in her head. As Nurtis simply gripped onto his blade, as he remembered what Hawk said to him, revenge and hatred is the only thing that prevail in this world. As he raised his sword, only for a hand to place on his face. That's enough. As he turned to look towards Mikasa, there's no need to spill any more blood. We don't kill the enemies that surrender. What? said Naruto. These bastards killed my comrade and they killed the commander. I'm gonna kill them. As he shrugged off her hand and moved. Would you be able to face your brother if you kill defeated and unarmed enemies? She said. As Naruto slowed down and came to a stop. As he stood there for a minute before sheathing his weapon. Aizumo, seal off their chakra and bind them. We'll be taking them for interrogation after that. The Hokage will decide. As Naruto walked away, as Mikasa went after him, she made her way as she found him, as he was alone in the trenches, as he was curled up on himself, as she made her way closer. I don't want to go home, he said. She expected him to say the opposite, not this. She took his face, but he would not lift it up, so she forcefully brought it up, as she saw the sea of sadness in his eyes. Look at me. What I did, what I become, he said. You're right. I don't want my brother to see a monster like me. She gave my kiss on the forehead, don't say anything, as she pulled him into a fierce hug. It felt like she was taking away all of his pain as he leaned into the hug. Oh, how, how do you do it? He asked. As long as you're here with me, I don't need anything. I'll stay by your side forever, she said, as she kissed his cheek. As the both of them pulled back as they looked at each other, as they started to lean forward. As their lips brushed against each other, Naruto, as the both of them stepped away, as Armin was the one that called them, as Armin came around the corner as he was panting, Shizune is calling you. As Naruto quickly made his way, when he arrived towards the tent he saw almost 40 bodies of his soldiers who had died throughout this whole battle, and 10 of them was badly wounded. Naruto, as he turned as he saw them gather on someone, when he arrived he saw Yujiu, lying on the bed, there was a hole right in her stomach with a pool of blood. She slowly lifted her hand as Naruto took it. Commander, was I useful to my country, she said. You did great, said Naruto. You keep those bastards to hell, and you will do even more, he said. Naruto, she's, she's gone, Shizune said, in a tearful voice. As Naruto saw her face in a peaceful smile. Did, did she hear what I said? Yes, Shizune said, as she closed you to your eyes. As Naruto calmed himself, Commander Naruto, as he heard a stern, commanding voice from outside, he gave one last glance towards Yujiu before stepping outside. All of them bowed when they saw who was there. It was the veteran commander, Baku. He gave a firm salute to them and they returned it. You have all done well, all of your heroes. You have destroyed the first division on your own. All of you have no idea what you have done. Everyone is calling you ghosts now. The enemy think that you can't be defeated. I'm proud of you all, said Baku. What's the difference, said Naruto. My comrade still died. Was his hell worth all of the life that we lost? It was worth it, said Baku flatly. Don't you dare say that, said Naruto as his sharing gun activated. My friends, my commander died while you sat in a comfortable room. You have no right to insult them. Naruto, he's the supreme commander, said Armin. But Naruto's gaze did not waver. As... Baku stepped forward and kneeled down. As he patted Naruto in the head, you're the same as Han. He was like you when he was 13 as well. Han? said Naruto. As Baku saw they were 
curious. You may know him as Commander Fox, said Baku. The truth hit all of them. Commander Fox was your son, Mikasa said in shock. As Naruto, felt like he didn't have any right to say anything now. The man also lost his son in this battle. As Baku felt a depressing atmosphere. But he decided to cheer them up a bit. You're all being relieved of duty for two weeks. Before we launch the next step of Operation Flash, all of you are to take some rest. The second company will guard this hill now, that's an order. Yes, all of them said in unison. Naruto Namikaze, you will be rewarded the Kunua Cross for your bravery and the leadership you have. Took on in this battle, said Baku. I refuse, said Naruto. That is not a request, Baku said. You should give it to them, said Naruto. And more than that, you should give it to your son. As he gave a light bow to Baku and walked away. What happened here was wrong. But don't hate your country for it, son, said Baku. I would die for my country, said Naruto. Then, what do you want, Baku asked. I don't want any metal. I don't need any glory. The only thing I want my country to do is remember these soldiers who fought and died for them. Can you show the people of Kanoha and Fire Country what these soldiers did for them, said Naruto. Baku's respect for Naruto increased a lot. Kanoha Cross was the second highest medal of award for any shinobi. And this boy just refused like that, first comrades. I'll make sure your wishes fulfill, Baku said. Thank you, said Naruto. As Baku pulled out a headband and gave it to Naruto. This is a proof that your comrades are still alive. They will forever be remembered for their sacrifice by Kanoha and in your heart, said Baku as he started to walk away. As Naruto looked at the headband, as a few tears came in his eyes, his war had just begun. Time skip. As we found Naruto writing letters, these letters were difficult to write. These were dead letters to notify the troopers, his or her family, that they had fallen. His eyes stared at the 39 letters in front of him as he written all of them for the families of the people that fell. Baku had offered to write them but Naruto felt like it was his responsibility to write them and gave them on. More and more he dived into this captain, commander leader thing. He started to understand his father, the decisions that his father made, the reason behind it. There was a knot that snapped him out of his thoughts. Come in, he said, as Armin opened the door and came inside. As Armin came in, looking a bit nervous, as he sat down in the bed right there. As Naruto looked at him, he could tell it was wrong. Having nightmares. How, how do you know, said Armin? Because I'm awesome, said Naruto. As Armin chuckled like because his friend antics. Not to mention that he did as well, said Armin as Naruto's face halted. As Armin took a breath, his mind was not steady. Many things happened and he was still reliving them in his dreams. Armin, said Naruto. I want you to be my second in command. Armin was shocked on hearing that. I... I, I can't do that, he said. I am sorry. He didn't think that he was worthy enough or strong enough to lead anyone. You don't have to be afraid, I trust you. It was you that suggested to use the combined attack of Aiwashi and Rinjutsu to destroy a large portion of the stone army. You are more than capable for this post, said Naruto. But I'm weak. I don't have any special powers like you, or the strength like Mikasa or the others. Being smart and making plans are the only thing I'm good at. A leader has to be strong, not someone like me. As Naruto grabbed arm and left arm and raised it up, there was a bandage on it to heal the injury that he received. A leader doesn't have to be strong physically. You saved my life. You were ready to jump in and fight and die for your comrades. You didn't care about the fear of death or anything. You just jumped right in. And that is what anyone needs in a leader. Someone that will not hesitate to save his people. And you. You're that person, Armin, said Naruto. And you can come up with plans that I could never do. Your mind is really sharp. With the confidence of jumping in without hesitation, that makes you the perfect leader. If I fall in battle, I want to make sure I have someone behind me that can lead our comrades to victory. Or either, get them out of there safely. Do, do you really think I can do this, Armin said. As he looked down. Of course, said Naruto. I have 100% trust inside of you. As Naruto was enveloped in a tight hug, as he felt tears fall on his shoulder, as he hugged Armin back, Armin was truly grateful to God. Forgive him such friends. What Naruto said gave him so much confidence. He believed he could actually do this. It had been two days since their victory on the hill. The first company of Black Light, which was them, was referred as the Ghosts. The Stone Ninjas were terrified of facing them, hearing that only 120 fought and took down 4,000 Stone Shinobis. Baku had made sure the news was spread in the Fire Country so the people could understand who was out there risking their life. They had been sent to a small town which was near Taki Borders to rest for two weeks. 
The entire company was resting, but his friend was writing letters to all the Fallings family and fulfilling any request that he had on their deathbed. He even written a letter to UGO elder sister, telling her how bravely she fought for her country. As Armin saw it, Naruto was a light and hope for everyone here. And he would make sure that light never died down, even if it come to his life. As he gave his friend a smile, time skip. As Naruto was annoyed as someone weak him up, he looked towards the clock. Six o'clock? Who the hell is up so early? As the banging continued, he was in his underwear, he put on a short and a shirt. As he made his way, I'm coming, damn it, he says the banging kept on growing. He angrily opened the door, and next thing he knew his hand was grabbed, and he was yanked out of the room. What the hell? As Naruto realized who was dragging him, Kitetsu. Come on, you need to see this, said Kitetsu. As they exit the hotel building, two people were outside waiting for them. A sleepy Armin gave him a tired smile, while Aismo was still wiping his eyes. You too, huh? said Armin. Kitetsu, can you please tell us why the hell you wake us up so early and what the hell you're up to? asked Aismo. Kitetsu simply smiled, and all of them knew that this wasn't going to go well. Kitetsu, whenever he smiled, he was always up to something big. Last time, the smiles on his face, he painted Hans, underwear in pink, and draw small bunnies on it. As Armin remembered how pissed the commander was, and all of them got punished for it. Guys, calm down, we came here to enjoy, didn't we? I'm gonna make this most memorable time of our life. Because today, we're all going to heaven, said Kitetsu. Time skip. Pure heaven. Perhaps they were in heaven. Kitetsu, for once in his life, had done something right. As all of the boys were glued to a small hole. As, because right now they were looking and seeing a lot of naked females. You're a genius, Kitetsu. This is perfect, said Naruto. As they were looking through the hole in the bathhouse. Wow, look at that. God, said Aizumo. So this is where he has been for the past two days, Armin thought. As Kitetsu had been missing for the past few days, only returning at late in the night. He was disabling all of the seals that were placed by the black light Kunoichi, and now they could see him there. Contrary to his perverted friends, he didn't want to enjoy this army, didn't feel like it was right doing something like this. So he made his way into the tree and let them do what they wanted to do, as he didn't know that Naruto was going to be so invested as well. If Mikasa ever found out about this, what's going on here, said a voice. Army eyes went wide. They told him to look out for any females that might be coming here, and he was too deep in his thoughts he didn't even notice. As Naruto slowly, slowly turned around, as they were surrounded by Mikasa, Shizune, and Uncle. As Naruto saw Mikasa narrowing her eyes at them, she had a pretty good idea of what they were doing, it seems. But damn, um, it was too good to be true. And now we're caught. How do I explain this, said Naruto. Oh, so you guys were enjoying looking at naked women, Uncle said. I, I was just checking if the seals were in place, said Kitetsu. It does look like that to me. No, does it, Aizumo, said Mikasa, as he gave her an awkward chuckle. Well, it was Naruto's ideas after all. He woke everyone up in the morning and brought us here. He really thinks a lot about everyone's safety, said Aizumo, with an evil smile on his face. You damn traitor, said Naruto. As Naruto was just about to spill the beans when he saw Kadetsu blushing, and he glanced towards Shizune, as Aizumo nodded. Oh, so the idiot liked Shizune. Damn it, Naruto curse. If you shift the blame to Kadetsu, he will never get as close to Shizune because Shizune was known to be a hater of perverts. Yep, it was my idea to peep, he said, and I drive these two along. I'm sorry, he said, as Shizune looked at him disappointedly. As Kitetsu gave him a grateful smile, you should be ashamed of yourself, Naruto. You're the commander, Shizune said. As Aizumo laughed at that, before Mikasa punched him right in the bathhouse. As Naruto heard chaos inside, as he tried to sneak away, but he was grabbed by Shizune. As Kitetsu was sneaking away as well until a kunai in bed right in the wall. As Uncle came in front of him, and where do you think you're going, she said. As she pressed herself against him with the kunai in her hand. As she's only eyes snapped towards him, she marched over and punched Kitetsu away. As she looked like she was angry at seeing Uncle getting so close to him. Uncle, don't get so close with him, she's only said. But Uncle simply chuckled at that. I was just making sure he sees his mistake. What's not Kitetsu-kun? Yes, I mean, no, I... Well, I don't care, Shizune said. She started to walk away. Shizune, said Kitetsu as he ran after her. As Naruto was laughing as he was free to escape until he was grabbed by the ear. As he looked up to see Mikasa, who simply yanked him away. As Armin watched all of his friends, were in deep problem now. Well, at least he was safe. <laughs> they all got captured except for him. Well, it was his fault because he was supposed to be the lookout. Well, he was too deep in his thoughts. He kind of forgot. He was about to leave when someone grabbed him from behind. His hand was about to reach for his kunai, how could someone get behind him? So, 
quickly without him even noticing. But he heard the voice. Are you peeping here, army? Said Rinjutsu. As he started to babble a whole lot. As she placed her finger on his lips. Shh. I was just kidding. Besides, I don't mind if you peep, she said. As Armin became red like a tomato. Rinjutsu, he said. He knew that she had a habit of teasing people along. But Armin started to think about something as he watched. Mikasa pulling Ruta away. And the others going after the girls. As he looked towards Rinjutsu. He knew that Mikasa and Ruta would never personally leave him behind. But sometimes they, well, got together closer than how he got together with them. But with Rinjutsu, she was the exact opposite of him. And it's always a crazy time when he was with her. He then remembered what Naruto said. Armin, you don't have to be afraid. Believe in yourself. Hey, um, what is it she said? Would you, um, he started to stutter as he took a breath. Would you like to go on a date with me? He screamed. She was shocked at his request. As a light blush came in her cheeks. She liked Armin. He was different from the others. No special background but someone who was willing to fight and die for his friends. And not to mention she always had a wonderful time hanging out with him. He closed his eyes. As it seemed like he took all of his courage to ask that. As it made her laugh. As he lowered his head he thought that she was laughing at his proposal. Well, he didn't blame her. Why would someone like she go up with him he thought to himself. Damn it, why did he have to ask? To his surprise though he felt a kiss on his cheek and he was shocked. Yes, I would like that very much. As Armin fainted. Meanwhile, as Naruto was frustrated, for the past 20 minutes, Mikasa has been giving him a lecture on proper etiquette as he was coming up with ways of torturing Kitetsu whenever they met up again. Are you even listening to me? She said as he nodded. Yeah, I understand. Can we stop this? He said as she sighed and sat down beside him. He had to admit, the more time passed, the more he started to notice a few things about her. Well, curves and all that. And they were getting him to feel strange every time they talk and when she was so close to him. As he thought about seeing her in a swimsuit. No, must not think about the things he said, as he had to calm himself. Is there something on my face? She asked. As she saw him staring at her, his eyes widened. He stuck at romance. What was he supposed to do now? He wished his father had given him some tips on what to do when it comes to what these things. Well, he was always someone that went for it, right? You look really great, Mikasa, he said. A faint blush came in her face. Th Thank you, she said, as both of them sat there peacefully. As Naruto saw two birds on top of a tree, snuggling up against each other. It's so peaceful right now. I really hope this war ends soon, he said. As he turned his head as he saw another set of birds. It was a mother. With two small, small birds and she was feeding them from her mouth. As he sighed. As Mikasa noticed what he was looking at. You miss them, don't you, she said. As she took his hand to give him comfort. Well, she couldn't blame him, no one could. After all, it has been years since any of them had set foot in Kanoha. And if your last battle was something new and worse things would be coming in the future. Well, there was a slim chance of any of them returning back to Kanoha. The last time I saw my brother, he was at Chebe, with baby fat over his face. I don't even know if you remember me, said Naruto. He must be missing you too, she said. Can I ask what were they like? As he smiled at that as he played with her fingers. Contrary to rumors, we were a simple family. My mother was a pillar that held us together. She taught us good. She was always there about my father. He wasn't really around much, but he always tried his best. He was a good father. He was clumsy and sometimes even lazy, said Naruto as he chuckled. As he remembered how Minato always ate, clean the house on Sunday, and his mother always lectured him on it. And your brother? she asked. She was surprised and Naruto started to laugh loudly. He was the most annoying person I ever met. That little shit was a pain in the ass, said Naruto. She bumped him over the head. Language, she said. As he looked towards her, doing that, she reminded him of his mother. Sorry, he said. But he's my brother. And I love him, said Naruto. I miss them. I miss them all, he said. I'm sure that you'll meet them soon. In the meantime, you should write a letter home. Your family must be missing you too, she said. As she stroked away his hair that was falling on his face. Maybe you're right. Doing training, we were forbidden. With contact to the outside world. But now, the idea was good and maybe he could talk with his mother. Mikasa closed her eyes as the ray of the sunlight came on her face, but then it was gone. She slowly opened her eyes as she saw Naruto using his hand to block the sun. I'll be by your side forever. 
as your family and as your friend, he said. A tear slipped from her eye. He knew that she was lonely as well. And she missed her family, but he never ever pushed her to talk about them. As he made her smile happily. As Naruto was not known to the ground. As she was hugging him in a bone cushion hug. Thank you. Thank you, she said. Just being around him, talking with him, seeing him smile, it made her day. As Naruto wiped away her tears, she has become one of his precious people that he will never let anything happen to her. You don't need to thank me for anything, said Naruto. I just do some small, insignificant things that friends should do for each other. Moron, it's not the big things that you do. Rather, it's the small things. That is what I love about you, she said. I can be honest myself with you, without ever feel like I'm going to be rejected or left alone. The small things is what matters, she said. Well, what are friends for, idiot, he said. She pressed her forehead against his. Forever, she said. Forever, said Naruto. Time skip in a dark room, sat Dishogadu. The man was pissed. His entire front division was wiped out by 120 enemy ninjas. The tables had turned and he had to withdraw his entire second division to prepare for the attack that Konoha was going to launch soon enough. He roughly had 10,000 shinobi left if he counted his third division in it. The tide of the war had changed badly. Minato and Jure had started to infiltrate in Kumo borders with their men, while Kakashi Hataki was holding Kira in a guerrilla warfare. It was only a matter of time before Hurzen and Kagamai united and break his defense and the Black Light would be able to invade the Hidden Stone. It was time that he used weapons that he purchased from Akasuke and used their services to crush Black Light. They were a real threat. Never in his life as he saw such an elite group before, he had to get rid of them. Damn you Minato Namikaze, damn your black light. Unki broke the table in front of him. Dragon, he said loudly. As an envoy appeared and bowed swiftly. Head to point 4758 with your envoy unit. Take 500 of our regular forces. I want that place to be defended at all costs. As he wished her, any other orders. Unki smiled as he looked towards the face of Phoenix. Black light member. Just do your job. I'll personally make sure that Commander Phoenix will be seen the Shinigami along with his forces very soon. Unki said, time skip in the dark, corridors of the Akaski base. A man stood there. As violent coughing could be heard coming from the man. As blood came from his mouth, he wiped away the washcloth. Such trivial things did not concern him. To create a new world, that is what he will do. A world where he could be together with her. He looked at the orange mass on the wash basin. It was his identity. He was no one, nor did he want to be anyone. The only thing he wanted was this pathetic world to end. He was Mother Uchiha, the savior of this world. As he was responsible for starting a fort right in the war, thousands already died, but he didn't ever ask about any of them. I should not use the Kamui so much, he thought to himself. As he placed back on his mask, he would make sure that this world changed forever. He had 10 pawns right in his palm to do it, not to mention the strongest Biju ever. And the Jinjulki is at his beck and call waiting to be unleashed on the world. What have you gotten? As Black Zetsu rose up, connected the White Zetsu half black half white, you always choose the best people for a cause. The boy that you've chosen have become much more powerful, and he's getting more powerful by the day, but his hatred is still not strong to White Zetsu. You underestimate him too much. The moment I saw his eyes burn with such hatred in that force, I knew that he was the one. Soon enough he will see the reality of this world. This world. Time skip. As Naruto was dressed in shinobi gear, his tonto on his back, it was time to jump back in action. The past two weeks had been heaven for him, but now it was time to go back to action. Someone gently took his right hand as another person stood on his left side. Let's go. Said Mikasa as Armin gave him a nod. As long as I have these two with me, I can endure anything, said Naruto. As he grasped Mikasa's hand as they made their way forward, he glanced towards Armin, who look a lot more happy these days. After their first battle of protecting the hill, none of them were rookies anymore. Or maybe it had to do with his developed relationship with Rinjutsu. I heard you had a lot of fun in the sight of blonde, said Naruto. Armin blushed as he put on his reason mask. It's nothing like that, he said. We're friends, you're getting the wrong idea. But to his surprise, Mikasa came forward and hugged him. Since when did she start displaying such emotions? I'm really happy for you, Armin, she said. My, my. You're so sneaky, Mikasa. Are you trying to steal my innocent boyfriend's a voice? They turned as they saw Rinjuku, Shizune, Aizumo, and Kitetsu. All of them were in their uniforms and ready for the mission. As the Rinjuku came forward and placed a finger on Armin's chest, the poor boy started getting nervous. Armin Kanji said, What was just happening? No, 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 you're getting the wrong idea, he said. 
I don't care, she says. She started to walk away. As she had to hide the amusing smile on her face. Wait, said Armin as he ran after her. He tried to explain. She lifted his mask and gave him a kiss on cheek, calming him down as Armin smiled and blushed. As Nurta smiled, he was happy for them. He was happy for Armin. And with that, they made their way. Baku looked towards the young troopers around him as he could feel no fear, just pure raw determination coming from them. There were 12 of them. Mikasa, Armin, Rinjuku, Naruto, Aizumo, Koteto, Shizuni, Anko, Eowa, Jenma, Hana, and Awashi. They were one of the best soldiers in the first division. A few days ago, you soldiers created history by defeating the Stone Army Division on your own, and I'm proud of all of you. We did our duty, Commander, for the village and our nation, said Naruto. Baku gave all of them a praise and nod. Due to your actions, the Stones suffer a great loss, and they had to immediately remove their second division from Taki to defend their former line. Their third division is no longer acting as support. They have put them on the front lines. The Tishukagi is really worried about us now, said Baku seriously. That old bat has probably wet his pants by now. That is if he even wear pants, said Kitetsu. As everyone looked at him tiredly, Baku gave him a stern geese. He was not as lenient as Han. My bad, Kitetsu said. Idiot, Shizune said. Kitetsu, after this mission you will do. Toilet duty for an entire week, said Baku. What? Two weeks. I'm sorry, three weeks. He was about to scream but Shizune and Aizumo covered his mouth and hold him back. As Naruto stepped forward, I take full responsibility for him. Forgive him for his insubordination. He may not have much control over his tongue but he's a fighting soldier. And as his commander, I will make sure that this never happens again, said Naruto, apologetically. Baku sighed, they were still teens and he could not push them so hard. Alright Namikaze, next time, it will be you if you act like a blabbing idiot. That pissed Katetsu off. Commander Fox won't treat us like this. He saw us as his comrades. You just consider us as pawns, Katetsu said angrily, not really caring who Baku was. Fox is dead, said Baku in a murderous tone as all of them flinch. Listen to me, I don't give a rat ass about any of you. There's no room for jokes, stupid comments here. If that is what you want, you can get the hell out right now. Only those that are willing to participate and fight like a shinobis are welcome here. Many of them avert their gaze from him. What is the mission? Mikasa said. He realized the situation was going out of hand. Alright, listen up. All of you have been selected for a special mission. It is an A rank border and S rank mission. So listen carefully. 12 of you will be infiltrating point 4758. In other words, Shimura Castle. It's an old chest that the stone used in the past. I want you all to capture it, said Baku. What's the importance of this castle? asked Hana. As Baku pointed towards the tunnels underneath it, as Armin was able to put it together. It has tunnels underneath it, which army has been using to move their troops all around their country, Armin said. As Baku looked towards him, <laughs> seems that Minato was right about his intelligence. What's the level of security? I don't think they would leave something like that unguarded. If the castle hasn't been sealed, something is not right, said Naruto. Just as your father can see underneath, underneath, Baku thought. Yes, the enemy has been operating their forces under this castle. There may be 100 elite troops there. The stone has been busy trying to stop our invasion. Your job is to get in and take down the enemies. You'll have two hours to complete this mission. Any question? Ayoba raises his hand. Commander, will 12 of us be able to capture this castle? You have been ordered to capture this castle. Black Light Command and I have gone through every possibility. Just make sure that you don't disappoint us, said Baku. This made no sense, Nurta thought to himself if the castle was so important. Why only 100? As Nurta narrated his eyes at Baku, the man's eyes were stoic. Naruto, you will be leading this mission as captain, while I command the rest of the first company and lead them another location. Is everything clear to you, said Baku flatly. The question as Supreme Commander was not. A lot to them, after all they could not do that. They couldn't even ask if they were being sent on a suicide mission. We'll get the job done, said Naruto. However, none of them noticed that Baku placed four flags around the castle. Moments later, as Naruto was getting himself ready, as he was checking everything twice. As Mikasa came over and placed a hand on his shoulder, don't overburden yourself. You get old fast, she said. I'm the captain. It's my job to protect you all, said Naruto. And I'll butcher anyone that tried to harm any of you. As she felt the murderous rage behind him, she was worried. Ever since everything happened, Naruto was getting more colder and colder. One moment he could be this kind, loving person, next he would just change in the blink of an eye. And he was getting colder and colder. Naruto, do you remember what you said to the 
to Commander. Back at the hill, she asks. Hmm? I didn't. I just killed the Commander. I don't think that we had a chat. As she neared her eyes. What is it? said Naruto. Oh, it's nothing, she said. As she walked away, leaving behind a confused Naruto. Time skip. As Naruto watched the skies around him, they had headed deep, and soon enough they will infiltrate the castle. But he could not shake the feeling that something was wrong, terribly wrong. Hey, Naruto. I'm sorry for putting you in trouble, said Katetsu. As they were traveling in the same bird. Katetsu, you're a strong shinobi, but sometimes you fail. To understand the situation, the way you behave with Baku was wrong. Despite him being the supreme commander, he's still human. His son is rotting in his Shinigami's stomach. Try to understand his pain, said Naruto. But, don't waste your talent in useless arguments, said Naruto. Change this world and protect your comrades with your powers, said Naruto. Kotetsu didn't know why they still hang out with him. He couldn't keep his mouth on the wrap. When he painted the commander underwear, none of them ratted him out. All of them stood by his side. And when things got worse, Arm and Naruto said that they were all in together on this. And all of them got punishment. Time skip. As Naruto was placing his fingers on the ground. There are 70 of them in that castle, said Naruto. As his turn gun was activated, it seems the commander was wrong. Judging from their chakra, they are at least jo- Wait, what is this? As Naruto was confused, impossible. How can one person have so much chakra? This makes absolutely no sense. What's going on, said Armin? Naruto, let me. Katetsu and Aoba go ahead and scout the castle. Maybe the enemies have fallen seals up. Prevent you from sensing their exact number. Aoba is the sensor as well. Katetsu can help me provide cover for Aoba. We will relay the information to you if there's any trouble. We'll fall back, Armin said. It's too risky. Let me handle this. Me and Mikasa will... Armin shook his head. You are the commander. We can't afford to let you go in. We can do this, said Armin. I got this one, he said. As he looked at Naruto, as he gave Naruto a firm nod. As Naruto brought his hands together and created nine clones. Protect these three at all costs, understood. The clones nodded. But how are you guys going to get inside? Asked Mikasa. I have a plan. Meanwhile, a stone shinobi. As he looked around cautiously, he was told not to underestimate the enemy. Dust picked up around him as he was confused. Before he could blink, those dust particles turned the enemy ninja and he was struck right to the head. One down, Armin reported. As they crawled and made their way towards the center. Ayuba, what do you got? I can feel chakra disruption and seals outside the castle. No wonder Nurt could not send them full from the outside. They're made to disrupt the centers. 500 of them in total. All of them are on book class. Before Armin could say anything, a hail of kunai came down as they had to move, as it destroyed where they were. Drop your weapons! They looked up as they saw hundreds of black light members, ready to kill them. It's a trap, Katetsu said. Baku set us up. Armin looked around worriedly. Hundreds of Anbu surrounded them. As someone stepped forward as Armin saw the stars, he was commander of this group. By orders of the Tishikage, all of you are to be taken prisoners for judgment of your mass murders, destruction, on our ninjas, surrender now, or we will kill you. Who's the squad leader? Armin stepped forward. I am Commander Phoenix, leader of First Company. Before entering the castle, Armin had changed one of his masks with one that the clone had. If they were really set up by Baku, the real objective from the Stone Ninja War to take Naruto back to the Hidden Stone. After all, he was known as the one that slaughtered most of their troops. As Armin activated a small seal in his gloves, it will give Naruto and the others time to escape. Forgive me, Rinjutsu, Armin said to himself. There's no way that you can go. If you care about your man's life, give the order for them to drop their weapons now. Armin, they will kill us anyway, said Kitetsu. Don't do anything rash, you're still young. The Tishikage will give you guys a fair trial, if you provide us good information, the commander said. I'm afraid I can't give that order, Armin said. As he raised his kunai launcher, and all of hell broke loose. But guys, be in some right here. If you want the next part to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notifications they posted. But I'm off for now, see you guys soon. Peace.